Okay, so Jane Jane Dyer from uh, Tudor Rose. Um, welcome to Elastic FM, Perfect Health with Elaine Godley. So thank you for spending time this afternoon to uh, to have a natter. Yeah, you're um, welcome. Wonderful. So 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 Jane, tell us tell us what you do at, at uh, Tudor Rose. At uh, Tudor Rose, um, we empower um, people with health and disability issues. Um, to focus on their business, uh, whether that be um, business owners or people looking for work on programs for employment or people in employment. And it's essentially where, um, for people who, whose health and disability issues are getting in their way of focusing on their business. And we work with them to come up with strategies that are just right for them um, to overcome um, such issues as memory and fatigue issues and organisational issues. Okay, so that's that's people who are who who have a disability of some kind, whether it's a physical or a, or a hidden disability. Is, yes. is there any particular sort of pattern of, of people that you help? No, um, it's mostly people with um, invisible health issues that have been acquired, so they're new to them. They are very good at the jobs they were doing or previously were doing, but now they've got the um, added challenges of a new health issue to cope with. So I myself have a disability, so. Um, I'm well placed to um, sort of show them by example that they can continue to do what they did before and I'm just there as a helping hand to get them to come up with strategies that are just right for them. Okay, so, so would you call yourself a virtual assistant? No, I'm more of a coach and a mentor for okay, them. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, but then I can then signpost them to virtual assistant if that is what will help the individual um, and uh, some of my clients have organizational issues they can do the actual job that they're trained to do and they're qualified in but then all the organizational things around that are too much for them so they would benefit from a virtual assistant so I can suggest that to them and Okay, so so more more of a more of a mentor then, really, as you say, yes. you have a disability yourself. So you're best placed to be able to say, well, okay, you know, yeah, you have what it. you have. It's it's a case of working around, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever yeah, that's disability it. is. Mm -hmm. okay. So when you say hidden disabilities, what kind of disabilities are you are you um, finding that people come to you um, needing help with? Um, well, um, my clients typically have. Um, dyslexia or autism and I've worked with clients that are visually and hearing impaired and also people that have got um, fatigue chronic fatigue issues um, they can be very busy in the job one day and then the next two days they could be in bed for example that must be very difficult. I, I know quite a few people um, like that, and um, very often when when um, I've been asked to help people, it's when they've had a really really busy business and mm -hmm. they've literally burnt themselves out. So they're working, you know, twenty four seven on their business and yeah. not taking any notice of themselves and their uh -huh. own business. And then they burn out. Then they get fatigue. Um, yeah. It's like you say, it's difficult to, to to pick themselves up, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And, and hopefully they're able to reach out and ask for the help. I think that's the biggest challenge that I find. They need to find people like myself who can step in and support them because we all need support. Indeed. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Again, that, that, that is a, oh, hold on, we've got another lady coming in now. Hold on just a sec, let me stop that recording. So, um, so we were saying that um, about uh, asking for help. So, um, yes. a lot of people, um, I would imagine, would when they've previously been able-bodied in, in whatever way that is for them, mm -hmm. 
and then suddenly finding that uh, they can't, maybe they've had a period of illness and they're coming back to work perhaps on a phased return and um, yeah. asking for help can be really quite difficult so how can you how do you help um, in that situation uh, well what I have to do is um, take up opportunities um, for example like I'm doing today um, to be on your program let people know that there is the help out there um, so that when they're in that situation they don't feel that they have to push themselves to carry on as they did before when that isn't possible and that could make things a lot worse for themselves that they know that there is people they can go to because I think they don't know where to go perhaps yes indeed indeed so, so, so it's my job and people that do similar work to me it's our job to let people know that we are out there okay so, so how do people find you then well they can um find me on my web do you need my details <laughs> yes yeah if you say them for the listeners that they can uh, know yeah, where to find you because i've had to look at it <laughs> um you can get me through my website which is tudorroseservices.co.uk and you can contact me on email at info at tudorroseservices.co.uk or you can contact me by phone on 07969 Brilliant. Okay, so that's tudorroseservices.co.uk. So, yeah. um, how did you get into this work in the first place, Jane? Well, I've had a previous career um, in the civil service in the education and employment department head office. So, my career has been working with the unemployed, uh, helping them back into work, and also mostly with. 16 to 19 curriculum mm. and policy working on um, get, helping the lower achievers reach their potential so I've spent a lot of time on things like people may remember national record of achievement connections cards things like that All the, so you, you were the working okay you're working as a civil servant then that's right doing the administration and support for those policies and i was also going into schools and colleges a lot but as well as that um my background i've got two adopted children that have got their own emotional and behavioral difficulties so we've had a job myself and my husband at the time looking at helping them develop and overcome their poor starts in life so so it seems to be a pattern that i've had throughout my career and then i had a period of ill health myself and i left the civil service and then my health improved so i was able to look at getting back into work so with the encouragement of my partner i started my own business brilliant fantastic and you truly do lead by example because um yeah I've, I've, obviously i've met you in we're, we're on zoom today but i've met you in person and uh, you are certainly a, a shining example of uh, what can be achieved so that, that that's brilliant oh, well it, it's because i've ha always had a disability it's like second nature to me so i don't know any different yeah but obviously i have mobility difficulties so i have to without without thinking but i am thinking about how do i get from a to b what's the easiest way with the least walking and things like that so that way of thinking i can hopefully pass on to other people when i've spent time with them understanding what their challenges are to them now yeah so you're a real you're a real inspiration in uh, lots of different ways so so what would be a typical club well I'm saying what would be a typical, <laughs> is, is there a typical client or do you really well, have a, a mixed bag? No, very mixed bag actually. Um, some clients I can spend a whole day a week with, some clients I can be on the phone to every day, um, clients with memory problems I'll be on the phone to them reminding them what's in the diary every day because one of my clients has forgotten to go to all their appointments in a week although they had their own strategies set up because the memory issues are so bad 
they just got oblivious to the strategy they had in place. You know, their phone was beeping all the time for everything. So they just ignored them. <laughs> oh, gosh. So now I ring them up every day and they don't forget appointments because if that continued, their business would, they wouldn't have the business anymore. Yes, yeah. And um, other clients have organisation and concentration issues. Um, we've had um, creative ways of giving them space to think. Um, they find it easier to think about their strategies and things like that when they're driving. So we've been out in the car driving to the dentist, for example. But then we've do on the way we're doing business planning. So. It's, it's very individual <laughs> right okay interesting so um when you when you say you have mobility issues does that mean that you do a lot of your work on the telephone or using zoom like we are today or do you yeah. go to to uh, clients as well I, d I do all of it really i can go to appointments business appointments with clients because if they've got the business to think about, but then they themselves have added mobility difficulties, which are new to them, it's something else that they don't have to think about. So they can just concentrate on their business of the day. I can do look at that side of things for them, the access arrangements and things like that, make sure that's okay. So it does overlap slightly onto um, PA type work, but it depends on the client. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, other clients I'm on the phone to every morning to talk about the day. Um, other clients I spend a whole day a week with, um, helping them with their planning and organisation, just simply introducing something simple like a to-do list that's split up into all the different aspects of their life. So they haven't got a whole jumble of things they've got to do and then it all gets lost and nothing gets done right okay that sounds really helpful for for those that need it and um you, you mentioned to me um before about schools so so tell me what you do in the schools yeah um what i also do as well as working one-to-one -one with business owners um i work with schools i've done workshops with sixth form students that have health and disability issues and i and i get them to think of what might be a challenge to them so they can think about it now and they're one step ahead of employers and put the strategies in place themselves well i can do this for example people with um sight issues visually impaired they can do the job they want to do or go on to university, but they need assisted technology and they can get support from access to work, but they might not know that at age 16, 17. So we talk about that, then they're equipped to tell employers or further in higher education about that themselves. So it's not a barrier to people taking them on. Okay, so that's that's brilliant. So you've got links with um, different organisations. So you can, I suppose, you 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 yeah. act as a signpost. I yes, guess. that's right. Yeah, yeah. I get them to think. I get younger people to think about what will be the challenge, is, and then I can then signpost them. Well, you can get access to this, and this is where you need to go. And then they're equipped when they then go for their interviews. So they're not faced with interviewers thinking you know, we can't employ this person because they're partially sighted what will happen if there's a fire alarm the individual will know the answer themselves and be able to communicate that before it's raised as an issue yeah it's surprising isn't it i think um, a lot of the time it's the hidden disabilities that cause um anxiety rather than the physical ones because you can see if somebody has a mobility issue it's you know it's 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 there in front of you but if somebody yeah, has a yeah. hidden disability like you know it, even with you know partially sighted somebody's wearing glasses who's to know if that person has you know really really poor vision or just you know slightly poor yeah. like you know like i have uh -huh. or, you know yeah. and, and the, the deaf side of things you can't tell by looking at somebody if they're deaf or not can you no no exactly and whether it's a hidden disability or illness or 
a vision one you can see i found with all my clients it's all around their self-confidence yes yeah absolutely and if they've got if you can get them to have more self-confidence in their abilities and being able to communicate solutions to the challenges that other people might see are there then there should be no stopping them achieving what they want and doing the work they want to so do you help them um do you would you put them in touch with um, a confidence coach for example or, or if they had you can see that they have issues or is it something you can help them with yeah yeah i i can signpost people essentially um what i would do um with individuals it, it is a bit like being an inspiration to them and leading by example because of what I've gone through and the contacts I have I can get them to think in a similar way to I've thought about things and where I can see there's a need which takes time you know it's not immediate you know I wouldn't talk to someone for 10 minutes and know everything because there may be hidden things that need to be brought out over time and then I can signpost them one of my clients it's taken a whole year to get them to recognize that they're doing too they can't cope with the amount of work they were doing previous to their illness and they're now they've now gone part-time so their health is improved they're not as fatigued and they can manage the work they're doing better than they were doing brilliant i like a happy ending yes yeah, so it is a slow process um with some clients but it achieves success at the end brilliant okay so now you're on school holidays you won't be having any school talks to do do you, do you <laughs> also link with universities as well as schools um i haven't done as yet but i'm always open to those possibilities yeah yeah because um i ha have um worked with autistic people and again i know where to signpost them to for student support and things so fabulous fabulous okay so jane dyer from tudor rose services .co .uk, thank you very much for spending time this afternoon and uh, i can think of a few people to um put in contact with you already people that i've um uh, in fact, a lady I interviewed recently i think um it would be good to to link the two of you up so i'll be in touch um outside oh. of uh, outside of this uh, interview oh, well, it's been a pleasure and people needn't worry about location you know where i live isn't an issue to where clients might be or where they need me to go with their work or whatever because i'm quite happy to be traveling nationwide so fantastic that's really good so lovely to speak with you jane good luck with your um, tudor rose services and um i will uh, i will be in touch Thank you. Oh, very thank much. you. Okay, yeah. bye for now. Bye.